building staff culture and I added even during a pandemic. So um, a lot of things in here are things I've just always done. And um, I will kind of tell you the things that like we're still doing or how we've changed some things, but it also is just full of some ideas and things that we do as a staff and ideas that I've gathered from friends too in the journalism world. So um, a good friend of mine, Mitch Eden, um, he's in Missouri, but he uh, um, has always said on day one, do not go over a syllabus because it's the most boring thing we do. And even the day I do it, I'm like, we got to do the boring thing today. Um, but we start with some fun and we even did this year, um, but we have a yearbook wedding on day one. And so the pictures here are um, my staff a few years ago, um, but this year just looked a little bit different. Um, but we, we have a wedding where we marry the yearbook. So right there on day one, we're just kind of, it's a commitment ceremony kind of. So they are committing themselves to, they, they're, we're in the yearbook room and here's where you'll spend a lot of your time. And um, we have vows that we read. My principal comes down and is part of it usually. And um, over here, y'all's pictures are over mine, but I think you can see this. This is my band director for my school. And so he comes down even and plays the wedding march for us. Um, and this year I actually, I had two, these are my two editor in chiefs. And so the two of them like really kind of did the bow part and stuff. And then you can see over here, these are my business manager and my design editor and um, some of my other people that were in editor positions, the business manager and stuff. Um, they were the like bridesmaids and the flower girl and stuff. So it's just kind of a fun thing we do. The whole staff gets involved too though. Everybody has to stand up and like repeat after me and um, they say some lines. Um, and if you just Google um, wedding yearbook wedding vows, um, there's a couple different options online. Um, this year though, the way we did it was um, I had everyone got to, everyone held an astronaut yearbook. I have a lot of them. Um, we, start, we opened in 72 and I have at least one copy of every year. So I wiped them down. Like I have like these white things and we have these spray bottles we're supposed to spray on everything. So I just like sanitized the books the best I could and then put one at each of their tables so that when they came in to sit down, they had a book. And then they stood with their books. We made a giant circle around my entire room so that everyone was spaced apart. My school, um, our district requires mask wearing. So everyone had their masks on. Um, my e-learners, well, that was the day Zoom crashed. <laughs> so our first day of school, Zoom didn't work. So um, e-learners didn't get to be part of it, but then I have included them after the fact. But um, we do a wedding cake. Um, this year we did cupcakes because usually we cut the cake all together. That wasn't going to work this time. So um, we did cupcakes that I ordered from Publix. And um, I also do a wedding favor. So everybody got a staff t-shirt on day one. I have a picture of the shirts in here somewhere. Um, but they got a bag that um, we got staff t-shirt. And um, I did. I had a flash drive for each of them and a lanyard. I just ordered lanyards from our publishing company. Um, so those were in their little bags. Um, but just to kind of welcome them and invite, or, and just, you know, a fun thing and get a cool gift on the first day. So right day one, it was like, you're part of this. Um, they kind of get an idea then that it's different. It's going to be fun. And we do these kind of things, <laughs> even though they're silly. Oh, and I borrow my friend's, um, her um, graduation gown from when she got her master's. It's a black gown. So I wore that. I go put that on over my dress. and. Um, act as the officiant. So anyways, that's kind of our big thing that we do to start the year. Um, the other thing is, um, so that's in yearbook, but in TV and newspaper, we do a classroom scavenger hunt. So they do that first. Um, yearbook does it on day two. But um, the classroom scavenger hunt is just, um, it's its really fun. Actually, I, I just started doing it, was it last year or the year before? But um, my children went to a local, like a bakery here in town in Titusville, and they did like a kid scavenger hunt. And it literally was like in the room of the bakery. It was like, go over to this table and do this thing and go to this area and do this thing. So I just took the same idea. It was like each of the thing was in a box on this just paper and they checked off what they did. So I did the same thing, but I did it all about journalism and my classroom. So one of the things like this year, we're checking out cameras using a QR code so that we don't have to everybody used to have to fill out a form and use pens and everything. So um, I moved that digital. And so one of the steps on the scavenger hunt is to go to the camera cabinet and check out a camera using the QR code. 
So they would fill out the Google form that then pops up. Um, there's things like, like TV I know has to take a selfie in front of the door going in the studio with the name of our um, TV show above them. And your book had to take a picture. I ha usually I have them take a selfie with, I have blow up cameras in my room, but I told them they can't touch them. So they had to take it like with the camera had to be in the background, it's hanging on a bulletin board. So they took pictures like that, but there's other things too, like they had to get the autograph of an editor. They had to um, fill out their index card that you would do on the first day of school. I had them, like it said, get an index card off table two and um, fill out these things on it. And then, hold on, I think someone, oh, the chat. Um, oh yeah, the QR codes are awesome, Britt. Um, so yeah, but I'm trying to think of what else was, like I, I did some procedure things in the scavenger hunt just so they started learning things about the class, but it was like a fun, a better way to learn that, a fun way to learn those kind of things instead of me just standing up there and showing them the cameras and the QR codes and all that stuff. Um, so, and then icebreakers and team building, um, though, like there's still things that you can do. Like, I feel like even people at my own school are like, collaboration has been a big goal of our whole school. and as we're going into this year, they're like, and now no one can collaborate. Now no one can work together. But there's still ways to do things and be socially distant or um, have them work together on some, especially like, I mean, because even a teacher said, I guess you can't have your kids work in pairs this year because my yearbook kids have a partner they work with all year. And, um, oh, there's Jennifer coming in. Um, but I still have them working because they'll each be working on their own computer. So they're still going to work like together on stuff, but you can't just like be in each other's face. So um, we're doing things like that. I was gonna just share too. One of the things I did that was an easy icebreaker and you could do it anytime. And it was kind of fun because they learned about each other. And I can't even remember, I think I literally just searched icebreakers and this came up. Um, but I had them each on an index card. I had them write down three facts about themselves and two of them had to be really generic. And then one had to be specific. So like I told them, I said, for instance, mine could say, um, I love going to the beach. I love spending time with my family. And I went to college on a full golf scholarship. Because I did, if you didn't know that about me. Um, so those three things, I was like, so two of those, I bet a lot of you would say, oh, I feel the same way. But a golf scholarship, I bet since you're all in high school, none of you have been to college yet, didn't go on a scholarship. So um, I, so with that, what you do is you have them write the three facts. And then you actually, like, once they turn on the cards, then you read the cards and everyone who has that in common stands up. So it was kind of fun because then like uh, like mine, we, we said, I love going to the beach. A bunch of them stood up. And then it was like, um, I love spending time with my family. Most of them stood up, some did sit down. And then, um, then when I said, I went to college on a golf scholarship, everybody sat down and I was the only one standing. So that's kind of, it was kind of fun because every time it was like, guess whose card it is. And they'd be looking around like, oh, those people stood up for two of them. Oh wait. Now you're the only one standing. But here once in a while, there was somebody who was like, I have 14 animals and somebody else stood up for it. And we were like, wow, you both have 14 animals? But it was really neat. They they connected with each other and I learned a lot about them. So that's a fun thing. That was an easy one. And I think that's something too, like the e-learners can totally be part of that. Um, so then I put Zoom challenges because I keep seeing people putting out ideas for this and lots of different ways to use team building and icebreakers and things like that. Um, with Zoom. So um, whether you do some trivia or um, I know in the JEA stuff, um, I did one of those Zooms where we learned about team building and they played a game that was called Hot or Not. And you actually ask them like, it's do you like this or don't you like this? So they could either use the thumbs up here on Zoom or um, actually um, they had told us to write hot and then not on the other side. And they put up like two pictures like tacos or no. Yeah, like it was like a picture of tacos. Is it hot or not? And then like Maybe Brad Pitt, is it hot or not? But could be whatever you want. <laughs> Something teenagers like. Okay, so those are just ideas for that. Um, whoops, it's not going forward. Oh, sorry, whoops, I jumped. Okay, um, a big part of like what I really love to push my kids to do is to make goals. And so I put goals in support because um, I like them knowing each other's goals too so that they can support each other. So something I have them do right away and this year, what I had them do was, oh, one of the um, scavenger hunt, this goal setting is part of that. So one of the stops was that I always print out a picture, just an outline picture of a camera and everybody has to decorate a camera. 
And this time I told them on the camera, I want you to, on the back of it, I want you to write a goal you have for yourself this year. And I tell them um, that I want it to be journalism specific. So um, like they might say, I want to get better at my writing, or I want to learn to use the manual settings better on the camera, um, or I want to design, or I want to do a great job on the varsity football spread, um, something like that. So, um, so I have them think about their goal and do that. Um, some years even in the past, I, I bought postcards and I actually had them write themselves a postcard that I was, I gave them at the end of the year. Um, and actually we did them last year, but then nine weeks happened at the end. And so I never got them their postcards cause they didn't write their addresses on them and they were still at school by the time at the end. So when I, I had to move classrooms during COVID, so um, I had to go up there and pack and I remember finding them all um, this summer when I went up in July. Um, but I have, we set staff goals together. Um, I have them set their individual goals and I tell them they need to be attainable goals. They need to be things that we can do as a staff or you can do as an individual. So like I just put some examples or I think these were the last year, last year they were our goals. I have to move you guys over so I can, <laughs> so I can see it. Um, like for yearbook, we had coverage goals, like getting th the kids three times in the book, um, a sales goal. We always set the number of, um, books we want to sell and a writing goal. They really, my editors last year were really pushing, like they wanted better writing in the book. So, um, and then for newspaper, again, coverage goals, posting goal, um, our goal of how many times we were going to post because we do an online newspaper um, and also a writing goal again to do better writing. And then TV productions, coverage goal for them. Also, we talked about that and what that meant and who are we covering? How are we getting groups and people into the TV show? Um, and then like a weekly goal, um, for our weekly TV show, how many segments we were going to do and how we were going to make the show better. And then show goals goes right into that too, because we were trying to improve our show, but also, you know, get more of an audience and, you know, um, cover our students better. So, um, <laughs> that's funny, catching up to the chat. Okay. So, um, then I just, I put, this stuff in here um, about kind of thinking about the way that you do things in your classroom or the way your staff does it. Um, you just have to find what works for your staff. And really what I was thinking here is like, I mean, there's like practical things I put there, but I really wanted to say like every staff is different and what works for our staff might not work for your staff. And sometimes there have been many years where I have started this grand plan and I'm like this is going to work so great I love it and maybe it even does work great but then I it's not it wasn't attainable for me so um there's been plenty of years where I've changed things during the year or next year I'm like for sure we're not doing that again so um I think you just have to find what gels with you and what makes your staff um work well and um work together so I think all these things go into helping you with that class culture. Um, so um, for production calendar, like how, are, what, what does your production look like? How many times do you um, produce? Like our TV show, actually our principal, we changed to block scheduling in our district. And when she did the times um, figuring out our schedule for the day, it, she really had a hard time with um, Friday, adding in the time with the early release day for us. Um, so she called me during the summer and was like, are you okay with, I can't add five minutes for the TV show on Fridays. So what we decided, and I talked to my kids when school started this year, but we decided we're doing like Monday through Thursday is like our, a new show with literally announcements. But then we're starting in hopefully at the beginning of October, we're going to start producing an actual like a show on Friday. That's just segments. Like that will be news stories that my kids produce. And that'll be like an optional show that teachers are required to show Monday through Thursday shows. But then, Friday will be a little bit longer even, and we're on block now, 90 minutes, so some teachers will be grateful that we're creating like an eight to 10 minute show, but it'll be a, a link I send out that on Fridays they can show it if they'd like to. And hopefully I'm thinking, gonna work on making it better, that's one of our show goals, so that should drive an audience. Um, so thinking about your workflow, um, we have done a coverage wall, um, I think three years we've done it now. I don't have room though in my, where I moved to my new room. But in the past, what we did, um, just so you know what this is, was we took, we've got index cards and we wrote every student's name in the entire school. 
everyone had an index card and we organized them alphabetically by grade. So we, and first we taped them to the wall. I came back on Monday and they'd all fall into the ground, all like 1100 note cards. So then we, I bought thumbtacks on Amazon. So I have like 2000 thumbtacks in my classroom. Um, but we thumbtacked them to the wall. And so we had 9, 10, 11, 12, and we had faculty and staff. And then we um, had a system for how we were tracking how many times we covered them. So we had um, a pink sticker meant school pi school picture so that we knew they got their school photo taken. Um, and then I think we used like, we used those garage sale dots. So then we used orange dots were for every other time they appeared in the book. And then we also, um, my yearbook rep suggested this, we started tracking who bought a book. So we used the green sticker because green is money. We used the green sticker and that meant they had bought a book. So then we also knew they were a high, um, like we wanted to make sure that that kid definitely got covered. Um, but it, it was good. It was a visual on the wall and we could look right at it. Kids could go right over to the wall and be like, let me get some kids that only have a pink dot because if they've not been in the book besides their school picture, we need to cover them. But it just became part of our, like our class. And I think that's what really pushed my kids really thinking about three times in the book. But it could work for all your publications too. Maybe even it's like, you know, different dots for the different publications that they're in. I think somebody is trying to come in. There we go. I'm kind of balancing this on the arm of this chair I'm sitting at. So I apologize if it looks like I'm shaking every now and then. Okay. Um, and just thinking about your deadline schedule. And if you do um, beat assignments, I know like newspaper and maybe news magazine does that too. Um, but my kids work on beats and um, we have beat sheets that they do. So they are required to, the, the latest one I've used, because I've had like three or four different types of these, um, we kind of do a choice board. So they have four choices for social media, four choices for writing, and four choices for photography. And they pick one in each row. So some way their, their topic is going into social media and then somehow they are writing about it and somehow they are photographing it. Ooh, okay, one second. All right. So, um, I think part of your culture too needs to be that you let your school know who you are and what you are. Um, so we use social media. We're working on getting better at it, though. Um, there's some great schools across the country that have amazing social media accounts. Um, I know Courtney Hanks, um, their school too, does really good with social media. Um, so, um, it's just somewhere where you can really, you can show your audience, you know, what's going to, what they can expect or what they might see in the book, but it's also a place to do some more coverage to, you know, do some profiles or, um, in the spring, last spring, we did, um, senior shout outs and we posted them to the Facebook page for our school and we put them on our Instagram. So, um, the kids, the seniors really, really liked those. Um, but. Um, some other ways then, like there's tons of like theme related ideas. So one year um, over there on the left, you can see we did kind of like the Livestrong bracelets, but um, that was our um, Your Story Matters was our theme that year. And so we put hashtag Your Story Matters like on everything and on all our posts on it, on our social medias and stuff. And every kid that bought their book at registration, I think I had like 250 of these bracelets. Um, every kid that bought their book at registration got a bracelet. Um, and then over on the right, these are actually from last year. Um, our theme was all the same, but totally different, which totally fit with what ended up happening at the end of the year. Um, but we had done pop sockets for, um, I want to say like the first 200 that bought their book. So I kind of like doing those kind of gimmicky kind of things. Um, but it gets kids out there. Like we saw these, um, pop sockets everywhere. That's what that is. I don't remember if I said that, but that's a pop socket. So, um, we gave those out like at registration and I literally had people coming up going, I want to buy a book cause I want one of the pop sockets. And I was like, and I still have some. So if anybody would like a pop socket. Um, and then I, there, here's the picture of our current theme and this year's staff t-shirt. So last year I, the pop sockets matched our t-shirt exactly. And they matched the cover of the book exactly. So um, on the day one last year for wedding, they just got the t-shirt and everybody got the staff t-shirt with our theme. And then this year, tell you what is our theme. So um, this was their shirts, and this is actually what we designed with our um, the plant artist um, with our publishing company. So that's what's on the cover of our book. 
Um, chat Mallory said, do you think the expense of buying the giveaways is beneficial overall? I do because um, I get them very cheap. So uh, I'd say, yeah, because <laughs> I mean, I the pop sockets were very, very cheap and even those bracelets too. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend too much on something. Um, we did t-shirts one year for the, we said the first 50 seniors got a t-shirt and we made them, they said like got senioritis or something, I think. And on the back, we just, all I did was I made it like some kind of silly senior slogan on the front. And then um, somebody at yearbook camp even had the shirt on and I was like, oh, that's funny. So I had our um, local guy print, it's a black shirt and it had that senior saying thing on the front and on the back, I just put www.jostensyearbooks.com. So hopefully just some walking advertisement, but it was like the first 50 seniors that bought their book got a senior t-shirt, but I just usually do something like that. Um, there's some more chat. I'm sure you're going to do this. Oh yeah. Um, at the end is my email. And if you'll send me an email, I can send you the email address of the person. Cause I actually got it from my friend, Matt Laporte. He's an advisor in Las Vegas. And how much do we spend? Um, I want to say that those bracelets were like a dollar maybe at most, maybe less, maybe 75 cents. And the pop sockets, I have to remember, but it wasn't a whole lot. Like, I mean, I'm only willing to spend like a couple hundred dollars on those. So around that probably. Oh, whoops, sorry. Um, so we just try to do things with our theme. When I first came to Astronaut and the yearbook advisor left and I started advising, like I took over from her. Um, they were very, like the editors, they, the uh, the um, mock cover came and the editors were like, okay, let's go over in the corner. We gotta hide it. Like they wouldn't even, they, they had a tradition of like the staff couldn't even see the cover. So like we didn't show the yearbook staff. It was me and these two editors were like, only we get to see the cover. They don't even know what we're, we're designed. They knew the theme, but they didn't know anything about what it looked like or what it was. So um, we, in lots of recent years, I have decided, I'm like, I want them to see the cover. So a lot of times even I will put that, the cover that comes, um, I could say mock, but what's another word for that? The um, the first draft, I guess, of the cover, or the, the cover one that you get to see. I don't know. but um, um, I have many times have actually put that somewhere in the school so that and it says, this is the proof. Yes. <laughs> we do an online book and don't get proof. So like, I haven't, I don't use that word a whole lot, but, um, yeah, the proof. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I take the proof and I put it somewhere in the school and we put signs around it that say, Hey, this is the cover of the yearbook. Do you have one? Do you want to buy one? And so we do that to, you know, get them excited about it too. Cause we're always real excited about whatever cover we design. So. All right, thank you for helping me out. Um, so, and then staff shirts are like huge for us. And I always say to them, I'm like, you guys love shirts, but I think it might be me. It might be me that has a problem. Um, we sometimes do, we do at least two, sometimes three shirts a year. Um, and I have a guy locally that does them and he only charges me, um, I think we, he went up from five to $6 a shirt, but um, I just charge the kids that amount and I let them pay for their shirts. Uh, but I usually try to buy one of the shirts. So like these last year and this year, the first shirt, I, I bought these out of our yearbook account, but usually they buy their shirts. And then staff badges. My kids are like, they love the badges. Like they're already asking me like, when do we get our badges? But I'm like, we usually take school photos and they use the school pictures for their picture on their badge. And we were set for September 1st, but we went ahead and postponed. So we haven't taken our school photos yet. So I'm kind of thinking I might go back to the way I used to do it and take their photos and then send them to our school photographer. And they actually do our um, staff badges for us. So um, yeah, I, but my kids wear the staff badges. We keep them in my room. I have this slot thing that they can all put them in. So they put them in there. And then anytime they leave my room, they wear them. And if they go to an event or something, if they're gonna be on the sidelines or whatever, I tell them they have to have their badge on. So. They like them because it's a sign of importance. And then wearing them around, you know, too. It's definitely, I've had kids come by and be like, I want to be in your book. I want to have a badge. So I just think they are something too that just add to the importance and professionalism of your um, publication. So, okay. 
So as far as staff organization, um, these are some ways I think too that just build a culture of, you know, helping your kids be organized and helping you stay on top of things, helping your editors do some leading. Um, I was gonna check that. Oh, yep. Thank you, Jean. You said proof too. Um, so for page submissions, um, we do a movable ladder, but the way my room is set up right now, I don't have room for it. So I'm trying to figure out if I'm gonna make some space and make it work or if I just can't do it. But these are pictures of my old ladder in my old classroom. Um, we just made a sticky note for every spread in the book and we have um, not started. And then um, I think this one is in progress over here and then down here it says submitted. So we actually just move the um, sticky notes around as we're working on things. Um, another way that we did in recent years, um, a year or two ago, we started doing, um, we called them sprints. And so every two weeks they were on a sprint and during a sprint they had a yearbook spread assigned with their partner. And we actually did, they had to make a to-do list for their spread and they wrote each step, each thing on their to-do list had to be on its own sticky note. And then we had a giant bulletin board in my room that said to do, doing, and done. And that way, as they finish their spread, it might say, write dominant headline. It might say, choose, do choose photos for the dominant module. Um, write the story for the, um, like maybe for the module about the rivalry game. But each step that would complete the whole spread. And so as they did them, they work on them, move them over. And then when they were done, and, that, and each group had their own color sticky notes. So all the pink ones for, were for one spread and you'd see them move across the thing. I just am very visual. so. I love things like where we can see our progress and look at it. So I've done that a few different ways. Um, but, um, and also uh, I feel a little bit famous because when you search um, movable yearbook ladder, there we go. Um, if you search that on Pinterest, these pictures come up. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool the first time I saw that. Um, but, um, so, thinking about the way you do yearbooks. Oh, I think I put these things because these are what I have on like our, um, and we still do, like I have a square bulletin board. It's just not as big. It's not gonna have room for me to do my ladder stuff with it. But on our bulletin board in the room, um, we do, um, we have our list of, like you can see here, this is all the pages. These are the pairs and listed is all their pages for the whole yearbook. Um, this is minus like the editor pages, the senior ad pages, business ad, like those are assigned to editor people. Um, but we do our yearbook sales. We keep track of those on here. This was the list of buyers right here that I would print out every like week. And I always put it at the top as of whatever the date was, I printed it. Um, and we just kept updating it. We always put a little countdown. So it says days left till deadline. And I think that says 14, maybe it's a little blurry. Then we also had like how many yearbooks were left to sell and um, how many books we had sold. So you can see that here. This was as of September 1st. So beginning of school year um oh, Mallory's coming back in um and then also like our photographer they'll send us the dates they're going to be at the sporting event so I always put those on a um, paper and print that out and then whatever deadline we're actually on I list the pairs and which spread they will have to turn in so there was the movable ladder to the left then this stuff in the middle and then these page assignment lists were are over on the far right and there's our to do oh I do I just realized that was there I couldn't see it because it's behind the picture. There's our to do, doing, and done thing. Sorry, it's hard to see everything. You have a okay. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's what this whole list was about our organization. All right. Um, oh, this is something too that my students love. Um, we do staff mailboxes, and we've done them a lot of different ways. Like we used to have these little baskets we bought at the dollar store. Hey, no, go inside. Sorry. Um, but I bought these. Um, these are just those magazine holders. Um, I bought them from Ikea. I just buy them online when I need some more replacement ones because actually they do pretty good about taking care of them. And then this year, all or one of the years, all I did was print their pictures out on my colored paper. And I was like, actually, they look really cool like this. So now this is kind of our thing that we always just print them out. And so their picture is on their mailbox. And we use those for like, um, oh, well, it says, and to increase communication, um, it's a place for them to put stuff, a lot of them. Cause well, we used to share, I used to have a drawer in my room, um, one of my tub things that was just full of notepads, like FSPA, love vendor tables. Cause I'm literally, I pick up 
notepads and things like that. And we just keep those all in there and they'll use a notepad or a little spiral notebook or something. Um, and we had them and we were sharing them all, but this year I had to, everybody's bringing their own spiral notebook, but then they could keep it in their mailbox. Um, we do secret Santas. Um, and so if they wanted to put something in there, they could. Uh, my editors one year came up with meaningful Mondays. And so they would just um, try to write them each a note, like some, something meaningful or something to share with them or like a quote printed out and sign it and say, thank you for all you do for your book. Um, and also for the editors to communicate because my editors have to do two meetings per deadline with each partner pair. And so they might fill out their form and um, give them some comments back about their spread and things like that. So that way they could just put it in the mailbox. And then my kids are all about, they love Valentine's. Like this, it's like they get to do it again and they miss it from elementary school. So we do Valentine's and everybody brings them and then they can just put them in everybody's mailbox. And they love it. Like they literally are always like, okay, tomorrow, when everybody comes in, bring your Valentine's in and go ahead and put them in all our mailboxes. And then once everybody's done, then we'll all go get our mailboxes and look at them. So I'm hoping that all these things still somewhat work. Um, yeah, that's a good question about the e-learners because I have four yearbook staffers and I have five TV production kids that are e-learners. So, I mean, maybe their stuff has to be sent through email, but then they can't get candy and stuff either. So I, I, I don't know, I haven't thought about it actually. So good question. Um, okay, so uh, we celebrate a lot of stuff and I bet most staffs do these things, um, but I really am a firm believer, like celebrate everything. I always tell my editors too, I'm like, yearbook, TV, pub publication classes are hard. Like we, we work hard, it's stressful. Um, so like, if we don't have the fun stuff, then why would, I mean, I, I think majority of my kids take pride in what they're doing and they work really hard and they, they really care about their work. But also I know that, you know, they could just choose next year. Let, let me take a different elective that doesn't, stress me out this much um so some of the things we do are so that everybody will have fun and want to come back year after year so um we have deadline parties um and it is no i'm really sorry hold on one second <laughs> you're gonna have to go get So sorry, the neighbor's dog came out and then my daughter opened the door and our dog just got out. So technical difficulties. Um, but um, last year and year before, um, when we meet deadlines, I actually got my principal and my, one of my assistant principals involved and we did a cookie cake each time when we met a deadline and they would come down. And the first time I actually asked them to do it, I was like, all I need you to do is I bought these two balloons. I bought a cookie cake, I'm putting it in your office, bring it down when third um, period happens. And so um, they had everything and they came in my room and my AP had her phone playing celebrate and they had put candles in the cake and had it lit. Like I was like, oh God, I thought that wasn't allowed maybe. But um, so they brought that in playing celebrate and danced all around the room, brought it in and we're like, you guys made deadline. And so it was, it was really, really cool. So um, if you can get your, admin people. I always ask my principal. I've had two principals at my school since I've been there. And I always ask both of them, like every now and then, if you wouldn't mind, if you'll just stop by, say hi to my kids, like tell them thank you for what they're doing. Like, I know I have to put the idea in their head, but that's okay. Cause, um, I, I, they have a lot going on, but I want them to like, I want my kids to feel like they're noticed. And so I think that's part of that involving them. Um, and then show anniversaries, like your hundredth episode. I know it's silly. And one year we sent it into FSP and got a bad rating on it, but we sent our hundredth episode one time only because I was like, oh, it was so much fun to make. And I wanted to do the thing like, you know, when us, um, like maybe Good Morning America or somebody has their like some momentous episode and they get famous people to come on and they'll be like, happy birthday, Good Morning America, happy 100th episode or whatever it is. So I asked people in our building to do that and even some students that a lot of people knew um, to do that. And so our rating on FSP was just that we said 100th episode way too many times in the whole episode. So, and I was like, I, yeah. And we were, we were still working on what our show even looked like. But it was fun though and my kids loved it. And then even they, want, they were like, we really want to throw confetti at the end. We didn't have any. So they took 
colored paper in my room and just cut it up into tiny little pieces so that in the last part all my kids came into this shot and they threw this paper it looked like confetti but it was paper we'd cut up so just fun stuff like that um and we always we celebrate if we make our book sales goal um um the and also if we meet that percentage of student coverage that we're aiming for um just little things to think about i mean big things but things that we sometimes forget like oh let's celebrate that we met that goal that we made um and your end of year banquet i am so sad because last year we had a great plan and we were we had i'd already like reserved this place one of my tv kids mom owns like a venue it's really small but some people have weddings there and um dinners and different things there and so i had asked her about doing our we call our all of our publications astronaut student media so we were going to have an asm um, banquet at the end and it was planned for like may 13th i think so it didn't happen so maybe maybe this year we'll see um but doing your end of your banquet and giving awards to the kids and letting them just be together. And my kids want to dress up for that even, and it's just a big deal. So I love that. Um, and we write thank yous to everybody. Like I have my kids, we usually, um, I buy some thank you cards at the end of the year and we um, hand write cards to each of the businesses that do a business ad in the yearbook or on our online newspaper website. Um, but we send them something just saying, thank you so much for supporting us this year and have my kids all sign it. Um, something crazy this year is that we're actually doing free ads in our yearbook. We're gonna give the, comp the, the businesses that bought an ad last year, we're gonna give them a free ad um, as a thank you for supporting us, most of them for lots of years, um, but also to kind of help them in the sense that they were probably closed for about two months due to COVID. And so we know that they're kind of hurting right now. And so we're um, we're working on our ad sales packet to be like, you know, um, we'd like to do this to get back to you now. And we thank you for your continued support. And we hope you'll still support us in the future. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But it was one of my editor's idea. And I thought it was actually pretty great because I didn't know about sending all my kids out to businesses too right now and everything. So um, we'll see how that goes. But, um, and then birthdays, every major and minor holiday. Um, birthdays, um, Britt asked in the beginning because he said they have a birthday tomorrow and he was trying to decide what to do. And the way we've done that is on that um, getting to know you, like the information sheet I have them do at the beginning. Um, I um, ask them, well, in the past, I've asked them what flavor cupcake they like. And we, and originally, Publix used to do chocolate, vanilla, and red velvet. So we gave them those three choices for like, many years then they stopped red velvet so now they still do vanilla and chocolate and you can buy just one cupcake so what we did was we just we set up um, um we made the decision that for each person we got them one cupcake the cup the flavor they wanted and we got them one balloon from the dollar store because the dollar store balloons i don't know what they put in them but they fly for like months so um but yeah that way too it's it's just something fun and they have something to kind of even carry out of your class so um and they're always surprised that like oh my gosh you got me a vanilla cupcake just what it's my favorite or i don't know they always think it's really neat so um but brit something i did last year and i still have some so I, that's what i'm doing right now at least is i bought those giant pixie sticks they're just on amazon they come like 85 in a pack because i knew too i really wanted to try to i i sometimes i've done yearbook a lot longer this is my 16th book i just finished and so my yearbook staff, I feel like they're so celebrated and they're so established and we do all these things. And so I'm trying to build that culture thing into my TV class too. I lost my journalism one slash newspaper class this year when we went to block. So I'm hoping that comes back when we hopefully go off the block, but um, I wanna do the same thing in those classes. So I bought those pixie sticks and on their birthday, I let them like there's a blue, pink and orange or something. So I let them pick a flavor and tell everybody it's their birthday and we sing happy birthday and at least it's something easy. I've also done goodie bags too one year. I just bought chocolate and different types of candy and then I just had a bin that I refilled when I needed to. And then when it was their birthday, I, I had bought those like clear goodie bags. You can buy them at Walmart. And I just filled it with like three or four pieces of candy. I had ring pops. I had those little, um, remember the bracelets that have that hard candy? They're not that great, but they're kind of fun because they're, like put them you get to wear them and eat them off your arm i guess um but 
I just filled it with different candies and um and originally I will tell you for example I had bought like all chocolate candies and then I actually had a girl on staff last year that I gave her hers her birthday was like in September and she's like oh thank you so much but I'm allergic to chocolate and I was like what who's allergic to chocolate but she was so then I went out and bought some starburst and the candy thing and the ring pops and some other things that were not chocolate and so gave her a new one the next day but that way kids got a mixture of stuff so that's kind of what we do there's some ideas um and then senior tiles there's this is from class of 2010 but my seniors on staff um they get to decorate a tile so i have i actually sadly i have 14 tiles in my room because the first two tiles were before our school got refurbished and are in since 14 years ago the tiles are now smaller in our building so the two that were bigger i had them and i wanted i would my plan was that i would hang them on the wall or something but one summer they got thrown away or something they got they disappeared out of my room and i've never seen them again so i lost year one and two but i have 14 tiles in my room and the fun thing last year oh i love that too Britt. that you have birthday buddies yeah so that's, yeah, that's where I'm thinking, like, I just did something individual. And I mean, I have been doing that anyways, but yeah, I knew that was probably going to have to be this year too. Um, but for my tile this past spring, um, I actually took our yearbook over to my art teacher's house and I had asked her and I took her a tile. I went to the building and took one out of my ceiling and I took it to her house and I asked her to please, if she could, I mean, we had talked about it, but I asked her to please kind of um, or paint the cover of the yearbook on the tile. So it's on another, I think it's on the next slide maybe, or one coming up. But she painted the cover of our book that all the same, but totally different. She did it exactly like the cover. And then I took yard signs to all my kids in the spring. So when I went to each senior's house, I had different colors of paint and I had a paintbrush and a bottle of water and a cup so that they each, like I took pictures of them each at the back of my car. <laughs> adding their name to the tile. So they still got to do something. It was just a little bit different than what we've done in the past. So, and this staff right here, this was two years ago, they just love donuts. So we had donuts all the time. So just pointing that out, that was just something fun. Um, I think, oh, these are, a lot of these two are like Secret Santa's stuff. Oh, we always build a Christmas tree out of our yearbooks too. So you just turn them different ways and stuff. And we have one book back in 1970 that was solid gold metallic, the whole cover. So it's always the top of the Christmas tree. And then we put maroon and gold um, garland around it and lights too, so it lights up. But yeah, and then this is pictures of them. Like they, they draw a name and do their secret Santa. And then it's a big deal. We all sit on the floor every time we do this and they we say, okay, who wants to start? And one person gives their gift. And then that person gives their gift to their person. And we watch everyone open their gifts because they, love that and someone gave someone a fish spot last year or year before maybe there might be a picture of that yep right here maddie was my editor-in-chief and cheryl gave her a beta fish for her secret santa present oh there's these are so with the year that when we used to do the cupcakes i took a picture of them with their cupcake on their birthday so you can see birthday pictures on here um we do root beer floats a lot so there's a root beer float night and this is my daughter Bailey pushing our snack cart because we have a snack cart if we do work nights. And I'd ask parents to send snacks because I can tell you usually these cupcakes ended up like I'm having to buy them. And I just have to turn my um, receipt in to get petty cash out of my yearbook account. But um, oh, and another idea, this was easy too, is I asked our cafeteria if I could buy popsicles because the kids like all the popsicles they have in the cafeteria. They have these cotton candy ones that are pink. That's not what they have in this one, but these were like tutti fruity. But for like a box, they're really cheap. So she just sold them to me the price the cafeteria sells them for. And we did a like a popsicle day just to take a break one day. This is an end of the year banquet at Beef Brady's right here. This is my birthday. Actually, they had me go out of the room for something, or somebody called me and I had to go out in the hallway. And then I came back in and they had like redecorated the room and had music playing and it was on my birthday. But okay, um, most of all, I put have fun, play games, do friendly competitions. These pictures right here, just so everybody kind of, just to give you a good idea. This one is so easy. Although I don't know exactly, we'd have to think about how you do this with COVID, but 
it's a it's a fun um, game and the competition. But you give a team of kids, like maybe three or four kids, you give them. I gave them, I think, two pieces of colored paper. So like they they it was a yellow team, a green team, another shade of green, pink team, blue team, yellow, pink, whatever. Um, but you give them the sheets of paper and you tell them, I'm going to give you two minutes. Whoever can make the longest chain wins. And so this is them laying their chains out. So you can see like what this group, their strategy was they made giant rings, whereas other groups made smaller ones and some of them stretched more than others. But you can see like this one was really short, but these were really long. Garrett's here at the end, like measuring, he was seeing like where each one ended. So that was a lot of fun and we do that usually every year. I've even done that with all my editors. We used to have power hour when we were on the seven period day. And I, on the last Friday of every month, I met with my editors from every staff. And I always did this at our first time I had them all together. So yearbook editors were one team, TV producer, editor people were one team and my newspaper kids were one team. So that's just a fun, easy game. There's another picture. Oh, that's that same picture. Bailey pushing the little snack cart. Um, and probably I'm going to guess that y'all do food too. I don't know what it looks like, really. Um, we did pizza for our teachers during, we had a drive through registration, and our principal said they were providing lunch and they had pizza. But what they did was they ordered a, a personal pizza for every person. But they were big. So really, I was like, there's no way I could have eaten. I guess they were small pizzas, but they were not small. Um, yes, Mallory, we do summer birthdays. We do them all, like we put them, I'm trying to think, because not last year, because we last year, those kids, some of them we missed, and we missed the summer birthdays, because we usually do them at the end of the year, but we actually space them out so they each get their own day. So I love half birthdays too. I saw somebody else posted that yesterday. I saw that people did that. Um, ooh, birthday cake sticks. That's cool too. I know um, Alicia Merrifield, my friend in Texas, she does, they do the cosmic brownies. She's like for every birthday and they put it one candle in it and sing happy birthday to them. So there's lots of different ideas. Um, oh, so this was a John Cutsinger idea, if you know him. Um, he said there should be um, staff meeting time, then publication time, and then cleanup. So he called it, we, it, you're not, no, this should not say your. Wait, we, it, I'm not your mom time. That's flipped around. Um, so he said there should be we time, which is you meet as a staff. And then there's it time, which means you're working on your publication. And then you got to clean up your mess because I'm not your mom and I'm not going to clean it up. So um, that's kind of how he put that. I switched that around. Though. I need to fix that. But there you go. Um, then National Yearbook Week is a thing. So um, and Scholastic Journalism Week. So um, we celebrate those, we do different things. Usually what I've done with, at least with the yearbook week is my editors each take a day for those five days. And they kind of, I always had them do some kind of treat and then some kind of team builder or game. And one of the ones that I love, I don't know that we could do this, but um, we would have them go up to the whiteboard and they stand there. And then we, each, each staff member goes up and writes something around them so that you can see everything around them. I take a picture of them and then we let them stand back and look back at it. And so that's a lot of fun. We trust you, Jennifer, I'll have to look it up. <laughs> um, and then No Phone Friday, I think, I, I think Sarah Nichols is who I learned that from or heard that from, where she said they actually put out a basket and everybody turns their phones in. I don't know if you wanna put everybody's phones together like that, but. Um, Ooh, Dance Dance Revolution too. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, but no phone Friday just means that nobody's gonna be on their phone today and we're gonna really get to work and do what we need to do and that kind of stuff. Um, money making tips. I don't think I had anything really in here. Um, I can give you an idea though. We did, at least for last year, cause that's part of too why we're gonna do business ads free this year because last year we made a really good profit it's one of my best years advising I think um, because <laughs> randomly before COVID hit we did a month I think it was a whole month of February um, I asked the Chamber of Commerce president here in our town um, only because I know her and she does stuff with our school 
um, I had asked her if she'd be one, and someone else said, like, I think Marsha would be great because she works, like, the Chamber of Commerce works with the businesses in town, so she's always making business contacts and working with the businesses in town, so she, someone said, she might be a good contact to talk to your kids about, because I was saying we were struggling with ad sales, like, I'm like, it's not, I know the economy, well, now the economy is worse than it was, but the economy was, has been low, but, like, still, businesses are, you know, open, they were, and um, you know, I mean, there's, they support us too. So, um, a lot of times, you know, they're willing to do something, even like our smallest business ad isn't too much. Um, but last year we did, Marsha came in and worked with my kids, like the first or second, it was literally, I think February 2nd was our first meeting. And then she came back on March 2nd. Um, but for that month, we were like, we're doing an ad sales blitz. And it was literally like, you're going to try to sell as many ads as you can. And we had prizes for like the top sales and we had prizes for the first two people to bring in an ad sale. And literally the next day, two kids brought an ad sale. So they were excited about some gift card prizes. So that's what we did. And I mean, we made, we made good profit in our account last year. I bought two lenses, four new cameras, four new tripods. Like we were able to get some equipment that we haven't, been able to have in a long time so it did really well um so i would say that also we do it at the beginning of the year this would be a good like starting your staff um and culture building because during the pre-planning week not this year just because everything was so weird but usually um, my kids meet at the school um, we pick a day that they're going to meet at 9 a.m at school and i put them in teams and then i assign them like we pretty much have like i mean i'd say like four or five roads that are major that like are full of businesses and so they get assigned a road and on that day it is a free-for-all it's like sell whatever ads you want um to any business on that road just because somebody in your staff's dad owns that i mean he's probably gonna buy it still from them but um you're 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 open to go anywhere so um and they they can go well i used to time it i used to be like it's nine to eleven but then i was like you know what as long as you want to go ahead and be out there you can sell to as many as you want to go and whatever time you want to do it so um but that's a fun thing oh and like when the, every time we've done that i give the winning team that first week of school i let them pick where they want lunch from on that friday and so like i know the last time we did it the winning group was like we want chinese food so we ordered from the local place right near the school and i ran over and got it and then they got to have lunch they ate it in my room so those are some ideas about ad sales, at least. Um, somebody else is coming in. Oh, it's, no, I thought I knew. Okay. Um, field trips and conventions, sadly, um, at least in our district, they said no field trips this whole school year. Um, but going to conventions and going on field trips to me are just a big part of like what really connects my kids and um, the fact that I'm, I'm on the board with FSPA and, you know, I'm, I'm planning the district three workshop. So they love going to that. And then, you know, kind of being like part of the overall day, like a couple of them always go early with me to help me with registration and things. And, um, but just being together and we wear our staff shirts when we go to things like that. So, you know, it's just a chance to be together and show they belong and gives them a group to be a part of. Um, and then I've seen, we don't, I've never actually like, themed our work night but we've had like a food theme so like that's why I put like taco Tuesday or my students are always asking me to make I make uh, macaroni and cheese in the crock pot it's so good so they always ask me if I'll make that again so we have like they'll they will say like for this work for this work night can you please we have macaroni and cheese so um we do that every now and then oh yeah no worries Sophia thanks for being here Oh, I think she already signed off, <laughs> but I told her bye. Um, so yeah, but um, we've done taco nights a bunch, um, but I've seen other staffs that do like a theme, like maybe it is superhero work night and you come dressed as a superhero maybe, or camo night, or um, I don't know, maybe I'll do some things like that and know some more, but um, there's lots of ideas you could do for that. Um, and then I keep seeing people talking about like, watching a movie on netflix all together so um that would be something that you could do that would include like 
any of the kids that are at home and aren't going to be on campus for any of the stuff. Keep trying to check the chat because then it'll tell me and I got to click it. Oh, oh, I can send you the recipe. <laughs> Email me about the other thing you asked about earlier. I forget now. Um, yeah, send me an email. I'll send you that too. Okay. Um, it's like I'm taking forever, so um, bear with me. I'm almost done. But um, as far as awards and recognition, this is something too that I feel like um, we're getting better at making sure we do. Oh, and I forgot. Well, I took pictures today of what I did in my new room because I'm really excited about it. So I have to tell you, but um, I will have to add a picture to this um, later. But um, we do end of the year awards, and one of the biggest things. That I'm really excited about and proud of is um, I think this was three years ago. This is Maddie that had the fish in the other picture. Um, but I made this plaque. Well, I didn't make it. I ordered it and had it made. But um, going back to the very first year, the student that I, the advisor before me had left and um, the editor in chief that year was Chris Kerner. And so Chris's name is the first one here all the way to, and this is Maddie Fairchild holding it. And so her name's right there. So I just love this now. This is our tradition that, you know, and I just, so each year since Maddie, I just take this back to the place that made me the plaque and they add, I tell them the name of the new kid and they put their name on there. So that's something really cool. It stays in my room though. So I tell them, sorry, but um, you don't get to take it home or anything. Um, but we do that. And then I already showed you this kind of, the. Uh, um, this is this, I always take a picture of the seniors with their tile. So this is the senior class with their tile. Um, but you can give awards for best of like design, story, photo, um, every other part of everything we do in our publications. Um, deadline awards and celebrations, um, maybe a photo of the week and then post that on social media. We've done that a lot of years. Um, and then senior awards and even partner awards. Um, we used to have a tradition that each partner got to pick an award for their partner since they worked together all year. And so they would pick something and sometimes they were silly and sometimes they were like serious. They'd be like, most improved. Their design has gotten so much better since when they started. So there's lots of ideas of that. And we've done paper plate to, I have bought trophy things off of um, that um, oriental training. Like there's one that's a thumbs up. Kids love that one. So it's literally all the trophies are thumbs up. Um, and then I bought the one, oh, we, we used to do a Hollywood theme for our banquet at the end of the year. So I bought the ones that look like the Oscar. So we've done a lot of different trophies. Even the ones that just say great job and they're kind of like, they're different colors, but they kind of metallic. Okay, trying to speed it along a little bit. Okay, other fun ideas. We've done lots of staff dinners where we go somewhere, especially if we're at, like this was a yearbook camp. We went and ate dinner at Planet Hollywood because we were in Orlando. Um, but, and we do, we have a parade at our school. Well, I don't, I don't know that we're having the parade this year because I don't know that we're having homecoming, but I don't, no decisions have been made yet. But this was our astronaut student media float. And so my publication kids, um, but we do that. We also, I put the limo there because it was a great idea, I thought, um, and I thought of it. But we, I called a limo company and just said, our school's having a parade. Would you possibly mind? You could totally put a sign on the side that says, call us for homecoming and prom. But would you be willing to donate a limo for my staff to ride in to, as part of the parade? And then the only thing was though that, it was like a, a, it was a Hummer or an excursion or some, some kind of big, like an SUV limo. So it was really cool, but it didn't have even a sunroof or anything. So it was like, it was really closed up. So I felt like I couldn't see them enough. So the next year we did the, this is, this was the year after the limo because we got a, a regular float and pulled behind a truck. But the limo idea was cool. And if you had a sunroof, I think it would be even cooler. Um, and then oh, I said field trips that was already on there. state and national conferences and SPA is coming up and will be the Orlando team is planning it. So um, it will be virtual, but we even summer um, during the summer, we did yearbook camp. And as part of, I do like kind of goodie, like I told you about the first day of school with goodie bags. Um, I do them also for um, like yearbook camp and stuff. So this year I made them all uh, a teacher at my school was making masks. So I had her make maroon ones. And then I put AHS yearbook on the side of it. So I gave them each a mask. And then one of the nights they all came over and we sat in my front yard, socially distanced apart and we ate dinner all together. Um, so there's some options for stuff like that. Um, but maybe there's a way to kind of, you know, make the virtual thing 
like kind of together and stuff. We always, we send in like when we were at yearbook camp, we would send in yearbook and then I had made them a schedule, like my own schedule. There was the yearbook camp schedule, but then I made them a schedule and I had like team meetings on there. So I had my zoom open at certain times and they were supposed to come in there because my editors all attend yearbook camp. So then the last things are to like, obviously, hopefully you're attending FSPA, um, the fall workshop um, we're working on now, um, planning, it'll be a virtual, um, but um, we always have lots of fun doing the fall workshop. And then also in the spring, our spring convention is another thing that's a whole lot of fun. Um, and just a great chance for your kids to bond and be there together and do something and do the competitions and everything like that. Just watching my kids support each other I feel like really builds up our camaraderie and our um, togetherness. Um, and then I already said that yearbook camp and summer camp. So, um, okay. And we also really, I, I really love that we get a chance to give back. And so something we do is during teacher appreciation week, we always host one of the days we do a lunch for our teachers every day. Um, not definite what that looks like this year. And I'm actually the head of the social committee, so I plan Teacher Appreciation Week. So I just take a day for yearbook so that we can do it. And we'll we do the lunch for the teachers. And then I always have my kids. We take every teacher in the whole school and the kids pick who they're going to have. And they take their name and do one of those things where they come up with a word for each letter. So like Williams will do a W word, an I word, an L word through my whole name. And then I print out all their school photos just on my black and white printer. And we put that on their name thing. And then we put them all over the wall in the media center where we have that lunch. So it's just something now that teachers too will be like, hey, are you guys gonna make the name things? Or they come in there to eat lunch. And they're like, can I take my name thing with me? And teachers have them in their room like all the years we've done them. So that's a fun thing to do. And we do all the admin and all the staff people too, just to, as a thank you too for them. Um, and then thank yous, like I said, but Toys for Kids is this, these pictures we have. It's a local, um, uh, uh, he used to be a radio um, DJ. Um, nearby um, he started this where they give toys to families in need in our county and somehow I just got connected to him and so every year he asks if our yearbook staff wants to come over and help give the toys to the family so my kids get to shop in this room of toys and put them in the bags they'll know what kids they're shopping for and how old they are and then they actually get to walk out the door and hand them to the family so it's a lot of fun and a really meaningful experience for them um, and then I know a lot of schools do this and I really we've we've some years been better at getting over to our middle school next door but um working with your local middle and your elementary schools it kind of helps you to the connect your program but gives you, your kids a chance to give back but also um lets kids kind of there start seeing what your program's about and hopefully maybe getting involved with it when they get to high school okay um i don't know what time is it oh it's already 7 10 i'm sorry it's been an hour and 10 minutes. Um, I'm not going to play this video for you, but I reached out to my alumni yearbookers and asked them if they would send me um, just a short video of them. And they said when they were on yearbook staff, what it meant to them and what they now use that they learned in yearbook. So whether it was in life, in their career or in college, what skills or anything they learned in class has now played a part in their life. So I had, this was a video with just two of those um, but it was a lot of fun and I can't, I can't tell you how many tears I shed because people who were like, I mean, just, I reached out to any of the, any of my alumni kids that I was, I'm friends with on Facebook. And some of them, even that first Chris Kerner, my very first editor in chief, he lives in Alabama now. And he sent me a video and a couple of them that knew me before I got married. So they were like, I had her and she was Miss Sparkman. And some of them calling me Callie in the video. I don't know. It was just, it was, it was really neat. And my husband kept saying, oh, you're watching another video because you're crying again. So. It was very meaningful and it's something cool. I show it to my class now so that they can see and hear some of the alumni people saying like, I do this now or, or I'm in this class in college and I'm using this skill from that. So that's a really cool thing. So that's everything and I'm sorry this went even more than an hour, but hopefully you got a ton of ideas and um, if you have any questions or anything, please let me know. You guys can unmute yourself even if you wanna just actually talk or you are so welcome, Jean. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you coming in. Anything, anyone? There's my email too. So if you want to email me, if there's anything in there, or if you want me to send you the presentation too, totally willing to share anything. And if you're not already in our journalism teachers group, you should join that. And now we have an FSPA advisor group too on Facebook. So you should join both of those. <laughs>